is can I literally drop a question now and then you have like one million people answering your question you're never there are always a, an endless um bank of resources is very very helpful and i really want to say kudos to the team it's not <laughs> it's not easy managing a community to take it take it from me it's such hard work i understand but the, the team is really doing an amazing job and i must say kudos to them all right so products management portfolio and when mr um Olabanji reached out to me and said, okay, which topic will you choose? I decided to choose this one. Why did I even decide to choose it? Because I know that building a portfolio is something that is not really talked about often. You, you're going, if you hear people talk about product management, you hear um, the leaders talk about basically um, how to get into product management, your PRD documents and all of those things, right? But nobody really talks, emphasizes, um, how much it's important for you to have a portfolio and how a portfolio can can help you um, impress your hiring manager and even um, nail that job interview, nail that um, first opportunity to interview with your hiring manager. So which is what we're going to do today, product management portfolio. And we're going to be addressing building a product management portfolio, both for experienced PMs, and PMs with zero to no experience, right? You do not have any experience, you've not worked in a real company, or you need to have a portfolio so that you can at least show that, oh, this is something I've worked on before and get the opportunity because it's a very, very competitive space, right? The fact that it is a product manager role, it means there's manager there, it means that you, they need someone with experience most of the time, even for even a junior PM or an associate product manager most of the time they will choose someone with your experience over someone who doesn't have any experience so your portfolio has to be able to show that even if you've not done like a real life job so we're going to get into that um so so but before i start i would really really appreciate that this class is as interactive as possible so if i ask questions please feel free to type in the comment section. I don't write. <laughs> or when I ask to unmute your mic, please also unmute your mic and respond. It would be very, very helpful if you can respond and um, just interact because it's going to be as interactive as possible. I'll be getting ideas from you as well. I'll be learning from you as much as you will be learning from me as well. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so um, first things first, welcome to the product session. Uh, my name is Goodness Ehizode. I am the product manager at Clafia. Clafia is a health tech startup. We help um, users, patients get the care of doctors and nurses at the comfort of their home. And um, I am the pioneer product manager. It means when I got to Clafia, there was no product manager. So I took Clafia from the scratch to where it is where now in terms of products. Now we have like three products and over 1,000 users on each of these products. Um, so kudos to me. <laughs> so yeah, um, I am a product podcaster as well. I have a podcast like the last thing I've talked about, um, everything products today is there. Um, we've had Mr. Ola Banji on the products um, on the podcast once and he shared his insight. So you want to check the podcast is available on Spotify and also available on um, Google Podcasts, right? I have mentored and trained over 500 individuals on product management as well. Um, so I want to know about you. So let me know um, what you where what you do currently where you are where you are you're you're tuning in from whether it's ibadan lagos abuja and then what thing you are looking forward to seeing in the session so let's type that in the channel in the um, chat session where you are tuning in from your name and what you look you're looking forward to um seeing in the session i know blessing has already asked but i want to get um, to hear it from everyone. I'm assuming everyone can see my screen. 
and can hear me as well. Yes, we yeah. can. Yes, we can. Goodness. Okay. All right. All right, Toby from Ojota, Lagos, Femi Mega, product manager from Lagos, uh, wants to learn to build a solid portfolio. Paul from Lagos wants to understand how to build a standout portfolio. Juliana from Lagos, there are a lot of Lagos people here. I thought we have many Ibado and um, Abuja people also in um, the community. All right, so Lagos, Lagos people. Good, 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 good. All right, there's Abby from Portugal, Michael from, um, from from Lagos as well. Yeah, Lagos people, lots of them. Mary Jane from Lagos, Lamy from Lagos, Latifa from Lagos. Great, okay. So let's get into it. I have a, pre, a free product management resource. Um, it, it's, a, it's a resource bank. It has a bank for um, templates, PRD templates, courses, free courses and all that. It's just a resource bank, right? I call it the, the PM's resource Bible. Uh, and I'll be giving it for free to, um, to some of you, right? Um, all you need to do is go on LinkedIn, make a post about how excited you are about this particular session, tag me, tag Enova, um, um, tag Enova Lab, and then um, follow me on Instagram as well, the goodness and his day, and then I will send the resource to you. All right, so let's get into it so we don't waste so much time. So a, a little bit more about me, um, like I mentioned, I'm Clafia's pioneer product manager. I launched Clafia's first product um, on the top 1% mentor on ADP list. And um, my podcast is the most listened product podcast in Africa. Yeah. So what you learned today, what a portfolio is. Number two, building a portfolio with no experience. I mentioned this before. Um, it's easier for product managers who have a lot of experience to build a, uh, a portfolio but what about those who who are just getting into product management how can they build a portfolio even with zero zero real life experience so we'll be doing that as well then what hiring managers want to see in your portfolio right and then how to create an irresistible portfolio those are things that all of our discussions wait, wait will be centered around will be focused on i am excited to get into it please mute your mic if you're not speaking please mute your mic all right so now icebreaker question one word answer one word answer from anybody from us in the mention synonyms of the word portfolio what other words you don't use portfolio what else would you use would you say what are the synonyms of portfolio anybody want to try in the comment section virtual resume experience documentation great okay briefcase okay all right all right okay so one synonym of portfolio that I'll say is memory book. Memory book, right? You know that if you, those days when people come to our house, right? When visitors come to our house, we would show them a photo book, right? I'll call it memory book. They basically showed our life. They basically showed how we grew from a child 
let's say you had a baby picture from your one year old to when you moved to maybe like to your every milestone you see so it was a memory book our parents used it to show those visitors they used it to show them uh life experiences uh milestones right so this is what your portfolio is this is what a portfolio is see your portfolio as a memory book that when someone when a hiring manager sees your portfolio they are immediately able to visualize your experience now what your resume does is that it gives you gives them your work history right they are not necessarily able to see your accomplishments they are not necessarily able to see your um your experience they are not necessarily able to put that into a visual a visual um concept but what your portfolio does is it helps them create it does the work of storytelling your portfolio is a storyteller it helps them it helps the hiring manager help you to visualize so this is why i will call a portfolio a memory book a memory book helps them to visualize help them to experience to get a a, a feel into your experience get an idea into your experience like they were they they, they were part of it from the beginning okay hope you understand that so what is a product manager portfolio? I like it. I like this meme so much. He seems very confused, trying to understand what exactly is a product manager portfolio. Now, a product manager portfolio has these three things. It is an addition to a resume, right? It doesn't replace your resume. If you are going to apply for a job, you must apply with your resume and if requested, a cover letter. Now, your product management portfolio is an addition. It is what is it is going to be an additional attachment, right? Sometimes it is usually requested for. Other times, if it is not requested for, it is important that you add it, right? Because it gives you an edge. It gives you a chance. Compared to someone who didn't send their portfolio, if they see your portfolio, um, you should be able to convince them and to pitch to them what your experience are, right? What your accomplishments are. Now, because... The product management, the resume, your resume is usually very, very concise. You know, you want to put bullet points. You just want to go straight to the point. You don't want to make sure that you're not wasting too much time. Your, they say your resume shouldn't be more than one page or two pages. So there are a lot of limitations, right? You're trying to put, just be concise. Let me just, okay, this is it, this is it, this is it, right? But your portfolio helps you to draw much more picture, right? to show your accomplishments it is added to your resume used to show your accomplishments and then the last thing it shows the value you intend to give to the company right just like your resume your portfolio should be specifically targeted to a company right your portfolio should be refined to, to the job role to the company you know if you're writing your cover letter it should be based on the requirements that the company is asking for that you're writing you're, you're tailoring it you're 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 making it suit what exactly they are looking for now your portfolio should be the same thing as well it doesn't mean that you should necessarily go back and like change your portfolio every single time you want to apply for a job it means that there are some weddings there are some things you can change and some things you can add right to make it much more suited to the particular job offer so this is what your product manager portfolio is it is a photo book that you add to your resume that shows your accomplishments and shows the value you intend to give to the company esco vous comprenez i speak french <laughs> so oh sorry excuse me Let me. Can everyone see my screen clearly now? I'm presenting a slideshow now. So your portfolio should have these three things. They should contain these three things, or they should be, it should be these three things. It should be an addition to your resume. It should show your accomplishments and then show the value that you intend to bring to the company. 
All right, the next thing. A product management portfolio is a supplementary artifact provided in addition to a resume. It is a showcase and collection of materials that narrate the experiences and accomplishments of the con candidate with meaningful context. It provides examples of deliverables, roadmaps, market research, wireframes, outputs, e.g., links to implemented products, outcomes, and summary of your performance. Now, the, the purpose is to give the hiring manager a clear insight on what kind of value a PM candidate can add to the organization. Now, especially because the product management role is a very, very generalist role, like it's a very, very wide role. And sometimes product managers can be, can, can, in your experience, right? Let's say you started in a, in a role where you were much more um, focused on the development of the product, right? Rather than maybe you know, there are some people who are like focused on growth. There are some others that focus on the technical, right? If you are, if you, if your experiences are niched, right? You might, you know what this will do? It will provide even more. It will provide even more. Um, more insights to the hiring manager on what kind of product manager you are, right? So all of these things is to give a clear insight on the kind of value that you, are you going to focus on growth if we apply, if, if we bring you in, are you gonna be a business PM? Are you gonna, you know, all of those things that we talk about as, as, as the fact that um, product managers can be like an, a generalist role, right? So where are you niched are you going to what is your experience like what is the what is like a, what as a product manager what you explore does your experience encompass right so all of these things uh you are going to find ways to showcase them in your resume right it is a showcase and collection of materials of accomplishment in meaningful with meaningful contest this is why i mentioned that it should tally with what is required in the organization and it provides examples of deliverables roadmaps market research wireframes the, even the links so the products are actually live products that you can share you know there are some companies and organizations that have like non-disclosure agreements you might not be able to share but if there are live products that you can share you might need to also impute the links on those of those products on the um portfolio so that people can see and then you have to summarize your outcome your outcome your your own contribution as an individual now you're not going to be focusing on oh what did we do as a team your focus is going to be as an individual this is what i did right this is what i championed this is what i did so your your portfolio is about you and not your team don't say oh uh, worked with a team of five to do this. No, it is not about the team. It is not about the accomplishment of, of the team. It is about what you, what your own personal contribution was to um, in your previous experiences. Est-ce que c'est clair? Est-ce que vous comprenez? Do you guys understand? All right, great. Great, 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 great. So let's get to the next thing. Now, how is your portfolio different from your resume? How is it different from your resume? Now, your resume shows your work history, your skills, it is very concise, bullet points, no need for too much stories, too much explanation. And then there are no visuals, right? You're not going to be drawing a chart. You're not going to be drawing a this or wireframe, all of that. You're just putting your work history, your skills, very, very concise, and there are no visuals. Now, both in comparison to this, your portfolio is going to be showing your accomplishments your accomplishments right i know sometimes they say put on your resume and um, put your achievements use the star approach use this to do this use this to do this. i use this to do this and then this was the result right you can do that on your resume but you can't you can't go on to provide 
more explanation you can't go right go on to even provide a con on the, a context of how it was maybe this was the company that i worked on um this was the product so the product does right this is this is what i achieved within that time this is the process that i use those kind of things right your work your, your resume is very very concise you go straight to the point and you're not wasting in fact when you're um the um Hiring manager looks at your resume. They are basically scanning through most of the time, right? So, but because there is like visual representation on your portfolio, you are able to attract the um the hiring manager's attention. Yeah, it's seeing visuals. You're not necessarily reading. It is it's easier for someone to follow through with visuals than to follow through with a lot of tests, right? So they are not necessarily doing a lot of reading. They are seeing visuals. So that helps them. And then, like I mentioned before, the art of storytelling is something very, very important that as PMs we need to do. If you're a product manager, even with your team, you're gonna be doing a lot of storytelling because you know you have to most times communicate the vision, even to your internal stakeholders, your external stakeholders, to executives. And that storytelling is, is, a, lot, is a skill that you will be required to do in your um, to, to use in your portfolio, right? Um, how did I move from this to this to this to this? This is how I transitioned in my career. These are my accomplishments. So storytelling is something you're going to be doing in your portfolio. You'll be providing visual proofs and then it will be addressing the pain points of the internal intending organization. So I forgot to tell this story when I started. Um, there's this um, medium article I read a product manager um they were hiring in the in the in the us right and then they got in a lot of applications and there was this particular application that was from uruguay they were not employing people from from outside of the us right because you know on um, work visa and all of those things right so but this particular person had a portfolio and uh, Apart from the fact that they had a portfolio, they are, the, what they had in the portfolio addressed a certain, so, so he, he used it to show, okay, this is what I did. I worked in this kind of company. It is a car company, right? Um, and then this was what we did to, to, to do this, to pivot to this, right? And then it was something that the company had previously been conceiving, like, oh, we want to do this, but they had not, fleshed it or they had not started to work on it right but by the time the hiring manager saw that idea on that person's portfolio that this person has previously worked on this we definitely need this person in our team because they are experienced with this already this is how they did this is what they did right and in 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 using your portfolio you're not giving them um if you if you're going to do something like that where whether you where you have an idea right that you think that might be useful for the organization, right? You're not doing it in the sense that you're giving them all of the information that they, they, they can they can go on their own to do it, right? You are using it, you know, you're showing them what you, what the, the role that you will play, right? In bringing that into fruition. So this is the, this is the action that I would take and this is what the result will be, right? Not necessarily the, the all of the, 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 the um, critical information that we that will be needed for that thing to be implemented right so that helped him stand out because they saw that the thing that they the idea that the the product idea that they have been envisaging to work on that was probably on their roadmap somewhere somewhere um but they, they've been stalling on doing it they saw that this person had an experience in implementing something similar to that. So it gave him an edge. And despite the fact that he was applying from, from Uruguay, he got the um, opportunity. So this is what your portfolio can do for you, right? There are several other people who are submitting resumes, submitting cover letter. And if you look at it, it's, if you look at it, you'll find out that people are highlighting the same thing our, pro, our roles our product managers are very very similar right and then most likely in my company i am i am working with stakeholders 
um this other person is working with these stakeholders right i'm doing business models it's the same thing that we are all doing so if you if you if you look at our resumes there's going to be a lot of similarity but how do you stand out you stand out with your portfolio because now your portfolio is not just going to be saying oh i work with stakeholders it will be showing this is how i work with stakeholders this was the thing that i did this is the thing that i achieved and this is the visual representation of it so see it is not fake right so they can relate more they can understand more they're able to visualize more and get more context on what you're trying to say all of the things that you said on your resume they're able to you're able to provide more context um using your portfolio at a glance est-ce que c'est clair the difference between your resume and your portfolio est-ce que vous comprenez do you understand all right great now as you may recruit a summary of the pm's work history and skills but the concise nature of a resume reduces the impact most hiring managers scan the resume at best looking at it for a few seconds moreover resume lack visual aid to allow readers to gauge the pm's potential and impacts everything that i've been screaming since now a product manager portfolio can be powerful if it has the following attributes number one it succinctly articulates the breadth of products the candidate has worked on along with a little context a summary of the results achieved and a visual proof of what was built or developed it speaks directly to the needs of the recipients helps them understand how the candidate can add value to the pain points of the organization at the stage they are in. It enables the candidates to provide, to prove their dedication to learn and share knowledge. It showcases the candidate's ability to tell stories and compelling narratives. Everything that I mentioned before. So yeah, you're showing like, this is what my resume said. I'm providing more context on that with my portfolio this is the result that i as you may mention i'm providing visual proof of what that result is all right speaks directly to the needs of the recipient i mentioned how that person was able to convince them right to employ him because his portfolio addressed the fact that hey guys this guy this thing you guys want to do i've done it before right and it provided proof and it provided what his action steps was to achieve what he did so they were able to see themselves they were able to see their company they were able to see him like they were able to visualize him oh this is what he did i can see him working on the same thing here and bank will be able to do it so it enables the candidate to prove their dedication to learn now dedication to learn we talk about how the fact that we, you can even infuse your personal brand right how personal brand it can even be infused in your portfolio and then they see you as a leader instead of just a product manager right that's how you can you can show your product leadership you can show product management how you transition from being a product a, a a junior product manager to being a senior product manager to being a product leader is now much more it surpasses the development process surpasses even the growth it now begins to to reflect on how you interact with stakeholders, how much of a leader you are, how much you're able to mentor your teams. And all of these you can reflect on your, on your, um, on your portfolio, on your resume, because of how succinct it is, you might not be able to communicate all of those information. But with your portfolio, you can say, oh, this is what in I have a community. This is my brand. This is all that i have been able to teach is at the level of people number of people that i have impacted right so you can do all of that with your um portfolio as well now how do we build one even with zero experience how do we build a portfolio even with zero experience Product management newbie, fake it till you make it. Has anybody heard of that? Fake it till you make it. What, is, what does that mean? 
to you what what do you what do you think fake it till you make it means uh you i think to my understanding fake it till you make it simply means living in that uh reality that you expect yourself to live in you live exactly. it right now just have a visual representation live like literally live that visual what yes. you have in mind leave it right now basically let me put it all right okay so the term fake it till you make it started on social media when people would literally probably um a seller they have only two products and they keep shouting sold out sold out sold out <laughs> so that this is the last this is the last pair of products buy now or it is sold out they are actually faking it right um because it is not it is it is fake that it is a fake sold out right or you you want to um create content and you no know, it's just it's just creating like a, a kind of like um your reality you're creating your reality your reality before you actually step into it that is what faking it you make it is there's there's a negative way of doing it right where you're you're living above your means and all or you're 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 probably um you are exaggerating it right but there's a moderate way or there's a positive way you can fake it to you make it now how do we do that with our portfolio as a newbie with zero experience i don't have any experience i i've been learning product management i'm doing courses i'm taking an overlap courses and i'm not done yet i've not even started the internship program but i need to create a portfolio right so that I'm a, as I'm applying for all of these jobs, I can be convincing enough for the hiring manager, right? Or I just started learning product management, but I need a junior PM role, or I need an intern role, or I need an associate PM role. The truth is, I say this, it's a harsh truth, right? But product management is not a, it's a management role. Even a junior product manager is a manager. <laughs> so it is a role that people will pick experienced persons over people without experiences. So but so it means that somehow, some way, even if you have zero years, you have to be able to show that you have experience one way or the other. So now, if you're running low on experiences, stick up hypothetical challenges, develop an artifact describing how you would solve it. This document could be a spec, a slide deck, a notion memo, or anything else that opens a window into your thought process. Make sure to include a few wireframes or more cups to create a visual evidence. So you know what it says? It says you should create a hypothetical challenge and describe how you solve it. Now take the hiring manager through your step-by-step -step process, right? on the hypothetical challenge there's so many places you can find hypothetical challenges all right let's look at this um the next slide there's pm school dot i or something something some there's exponents they have like problem statements problem statements that are just typed out right you have a problem statement let's check exponents um So um you, you can you can check you can check the slide I'll, I'll I'll give the slide after the call so you can check it later. So but these places they have like problem statements, a ton of problem statements that you can work on. And what they even do is sometimes they even do like um a sort of like competition where they see the winners of people who were able to like walk them through like the problem statement so there are lots of hypothetical challenges you can work on they give you a, they, they give you sample problems you can work on so you can take up one of them start work on it um 
and use the portfolio to show your step-by-step -step process. The first thing when you do, when you get a problem statement, you try to understand it. Now, problem, then you do your user research. From finding your, doing your user research, you start wireframing, right? From your wireframes, um, you do usability testing or all of those things, right? Step by step, everything that you did to get through to um, to having the product um, be to solving the, the 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 problem of those users. So you highlight them, and then that there is there you already have it. You have your portfolio you're already working on. So all of those processes, um, I won't make up your portfolio. Now, the second thing I normally recommend is find other newbies in other industries just the same way you are a newbie product manager they are newbie designers they are newbie engineers like people with zero to one year experience who are like you as well and they are looking for opportunities to showcase their skills they are even looking for opportunities to learn they are even looking for opportunities to practicalize what they've learned and put it into real-time products now look for people in communities like that right and then work with them find a problem in your immediate environment for example um there's a woman that normally sells fruits right um around me she, before she, she she used to come on certain days but on certain days she wouldn't come right this problem around you there are a lot of problems right and then you can find people which you, you can work with you can brainstorm right and then document your process you don't have to wait till you finally get a job you don't have to wait till you get um a, an internship role before you work on things this is how you build experience so you document all of your processes and then those are all of your all the things you can you can do on your um use on your portfolio now another thing i normally recommend is there's these days there are a lot of um startup founders um that are coming up right people who have product ideas um and who have money right to to um, work on those product ideas they might not necessarily have money to pay a product manager right and they might just be winging it right but they have product ideas and they're already working as a startup look for them they're all over linkedin like their startups, you find them, you, they probably even have their own full time jobs, but they, they're already working on startup ideas. Look for them and volunteer to work for them for free as a product manager. Right? That way, or you settle with, uh, with, um, with them on some certain amount that you can call them, maybe for data and for all of the other expenses that you would incur working for them. Right? and then use that to build your experience as well so these are the three ways that i would recommend either you take up a hypothetical project right and just look at how you would um, um look at those problem statements find how you would solve the problems what would a product manager do what is the step-by-step -step process of a product manager document all of them and and use that as your experience or you look for other designers engineers that you people can work on a real life project together right and all of everybody can gain as well or you reach out to startup founders on linkedin and offer to work for them for free so these are the ways that you can build experience and those experience can become resources that would use on your portfolio now for people who have a ton of experiences this is your step-by-step -step guide to building your portfolio. Number one, what is the meat of your portfolio, your experiences? Now, jot down every single initiative you've done in your PM career that you were able to contribute to. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be that you were the chief PM or you were the pioneer or you were the... Yeah, sometimes, right? I think that because because we expect that we we need to have like very very huge additions huge impact on, on on in a company or in a product we don't we tend to not add them to our list of projects we've worked on we tend to to not add them to our portfolio but the truth is 
if you were in a company and you all were working on an app and your own role there was maybe customer success add it to your portfolio and then talk about the things that you did as a customer success person now the truth is as a customer success your role is very very similar to that of a product manager all right there are so many things that you do in customer success that a product manager to talk to user interact with them making sure that they get user satisfaction from the product all of those things are there right so you want to jot down think about all of the things all of the projects you've worked on in past company in previous companies present company that you are all the projects that you've worked on mind map all of them right just jot them down jot them down and jot down the significant the the, the initiatives you took as a person and not necessarily might not have even been a pm right now it might it might not necessarily as a p be as a pm right but as a person right that worked on that project what were the things that you did that were similar to things that people that are the roles of product manager right so you want to jot them down leadership did you take initiative did you contribute to this so those are the meat of your portfolio jot them down put them somewhere map all of them just ideate all of them and just just put them where somewhere the next thing choose stories where the context is easy to is establish you don't want to be spending too long explaining every product or feature prefer stories where you can potentially add a visual from a public product to paint a picture alternatively you could add a mock-up or if wireframe now what this implies is that you want to be straightforward um you want you want to choose um ideas you want to choose product ideas that you've worked on that are kind of like straight to the point that it's easy for the use the, the hiring manager to understand now remember that you already have a resume and a portfolio right and those things your hiring manager is going to take some time to do them. Now, regardless of the fact that you have a, pro, um, a portfolio, right, there's still limited time for, time for them to actually look through your portfolio. So you want to highlight the things that are very, very straight to the point and are most important, right? That once they see it immediately, they can see your impact, right? So you want to highlight all of those things um, in your portfolio. Now, note that like a resume, your portfolio deck should be customized to the job you're applying for. So you want to create an artifact with all your experiences littered out, but you should create a copy and whittle them based on the job in question. So if the job in question is, like recently, I saw you yesterday, I, I have this um, job notification that gets to my email every day. And then I saw a PLG product manager. Do you know what that means? A product led growth product manager. They are now niching, niching, niching to the tiniest thing. <laughs> it's no longer growth manager. It is product led growth manager. Can you imagine? So, in cases where like that, where they are specific, your emphasis will not be on the documentation. Oh, I did documentation. Um, I worked with the constructional team. I worked with stakeholders. Um, I did Jira and Asana and Agile. That is, you can see that that is not what they are looking for. They specifically told you that they are looking for PLG product manager, a product level growth product manager. So your focus will be on how your, you worked on the growth aspect of the products. Did you use gamification? Did you use what? Did you use referrals? Right, what were those concepts that led to the growth of the products you worked on? So you are going to focus on the PLG aspect of your role as a product manager, the growth aspect, the business aspect, the revenue generation aspect of your role as a product manager. So you want to be as focused as possible, trim it as possible. Don't give the hazy things that you've already given in your in your resume. You've already provided a, a very generalized or all of your skills, even the one that you used in, in uh, when you were growing up, right? Your your resume does all of that. It gives 
it gives a a full blown concept to all of your skills now your portfolio should be much more targeted to the skills that they are looking for now so you that's what you want to use your your portfolio to do should be customized to the job you are applying for Escovo company, do you guys understand? If you're following, say I. If you're not following, say me. If you're not following, please wake up. Hi. <laughs> All right. Jamie, you have a question. We'll take the questions after the end of the class. All right, step two, choose your portfolio format. The most common formats I've seen are Canva, like people use Canva, you know Canva, canva.com. Um, it's a design tool for businesses or the average user to just be able to create designs. You can use Canva. Some other people use um, Notion. I can show you Notion. Notion is a collaboration tool as well where you can put like tables you can add boards you can add links and all of that right then other people use web pages now web pages like websites i think most people use website and honestly i think that at the end of the day um when you're transitioning to something very senior and as a leader you would everybody would need a a web page as a website where you just maybe goodness at hazelde.com and then yeah, you would see your portfolio. Some other people use slide decks as a um, PDF. It looks professional and it's easy to share. So you choose the format I use. Presently, my portfolio is in Canva. I use Canva to design mine. So it's visual, easy to assess. I don't think everybody can use Notion. All right, while portfolios aren't supposed to be long, they need to carry enough information to clarify why, what, and how you worked on an initiative. Why, what, and how you worked on an initiative. Although short bullet points would cut it, you still need to keep your write-up structure scannable. You don't want to put in too much tests. <laughs> Remember, you're already giving them your resume and your cover letter. Now your portfolio should be more visual than their tests, right? Step three, include an intro slide, an introduction. Start the brief introduction about yourself at a high level. Don't attempt to copy your entire work experience. The introduction needs to answer your overall expertise some highlights of your career. An important thing, give them a taste of how you can potentially add value to the company based on some research. I do not want, I, I, just, I think that I'm emphasizing this a lot, how you can add value to the company based on your research is very important. In fact, it is the, it is the, it's the purpose of having a portfolio. Because there's no reason why you have a portfolio and have it. it has a repetition of what you have in your resume and cover letter right do your research find some gap in their products find some additional idea you want you want to you 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 think that would boost the product that they have right right you don't have to give them extra every detail just tell them these are the actions you take this is the result that they would need to that they would, they would get right it's like you're pitching your business. It is a pitch deck. You're pitching yourself, right? So you want to give them a taste of how you can potentially add, potentially add, add value to the company based on your research. The highlights of your career, your overall expertise. You're going to see how that looks like now. Look at this person, Jonathan Doe. I'm a product manager with eight years of experience in the e-commerce space. 
Over the years, I've had the pleasure of managing a range of products, including Easy Cuts, which is a major success in my career. I've grown the RL revenue base from $1.4 million to $2.61 million in 14 months, and the GMV by 28% in my time here. As a product manager, you see, you see he's now focusing on his specialty. As a product manager, my areas of focus and specialty include product strategy and road mapping. I'm passionate about creating a vision, a product vision that aligns with the business goals and customer needs. I feel I can add value to the company X by optimizing their life cycle, email triggers, helping them enrich their search experiences and cut down their cost of acquisition with smart SEO plays. You see how he was able to, number one, talk about his overall experience and the major accomplishment that can attract anybody's attention. Oh, wow, oh, amazing, 1.4, oh my, oh, 2.6, oh, 28%, that is a lot. Oh, okay, this guy sounds good, wow. Product strategy and roadmap, hmm. This person sounds like a senior. He's not talking about um, agile and development and all of those things, right? So you can see that it's more about vision, it's more about strategies, it's more about roadmaps. You can tell that this person is a senior, right? And then, okay, this is how he, you see, this person has gone to do a research and he has seen that, oh, the work that he's going to do is based on email, it's going to be on around growth. You can see that email triggers, um, SEO and all of that, you see? So you can see that he has, you can, we can clearly see that this guy has done to do his homework and you're already interested. You've picked my attention. I want to hear from you and see what you, and even hear about how you intend to do the SEO and all of that. Definitely we want to hear this person out. So you see, see how that plays out. Step four, context, contribution and visual now the part of the presentation the main part of the presentation the achievement this is where you pick up significant product feature or initiative you've had impact on and tell a little story this story shouldn't last more than two slides in a deck and a few paragraphs on a memo the structure of inter achievement slides should be context the backdrop of the product you're working on, the primary audience, and the problem is solves. So we've you've seen what the first slide should look like, your introduction, blah, 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 all of those things. Now we are entering into the the what the um what the con the body of the portfolio would have. The context. This is the product. Um Clafia, it's a health tech product that provides access to healthcare to for users at the comfort of their home. I've given the backdrop of the products, right? You see, I see. Um, the primary audience are these um people between the ages of them. This is their demography. The problem that it solves. Um, users are having to go to the hospital, um, and spend a lot of time on the queues right the stress that it goes the, the inconvenience the lack of quality health care at the hospital so you're giving all of those contests right so they are already having an understanding a visual understanding right they are, they, are, they are able to picture it in their heads and then contribution now what are the specific problem you work on in a star format i'm sure we know what the star format is now, what is the staff format? Does anybody want to help? All right. Yeah, please go on. Um, Ade Fajiro Ibrahim. Yeah, um, the staff format is um, the S is you describe the situation then the t is the task that you carried out then the a is the action that you performed then r is the results very good great 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 the situation the task 
the action and the results. So you want to use this to show your contribution in the project. Now set the scene and describe the challenge you faced. Explain what your responsibilities were in that situation and the role you played. Action. Describe the steps you took to overcome the challenge or address the situation. Results. Share what you achieved through your actions. A common mistake over here is to focus too much on what the team achieved. Remember that I mentioned it is your achievement and not the team. It is your portfolio and not the team's portfolio. So you're describing what you, as a product manager, personally achieved. All right. So the hiring manager is more interested in what you contributed. Now let's look at examples. And the visual, that's the vision. I mentioned that you have to be visual as possible. Now, if possible, add a visual of the interface of the product or a wireframe if it wasn't released. If that's not possible, add some other artifacts like a flow chart, like your user flow charts, a mirror board where you mind, did your mind mapping, right? And a spec screenshot to depict to just depict how you think. Hiring managers will want to see tangible evidence of work, and this is an easy place to land a great impression. Let's look at this example. So, you can see there's a headline. Reduced abandonment rates by 15% on easy cuts by redesigning the checkout flow. Easy to read headline showing the impact, the product, and the feature. The impact increased abandonment rate by 15% on, on the product to the product. Easy cuts by doing what? The impact by redesigning the checkout flow. See, this is a very short heading. But it has been able to convert to, uh, to 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 communicate the impact, which is reducing abandonment rate by fifty percent. Then the product easy cuts. Which feature did we work on to to reduce abandonment rate by fifty percent? The checkout flow. Very strictly points. You have attracted my attention, and I want to read what you you actually did. Now, the how. You know, we talked about the what, the why, and the how. I mentioned that previously. This is the what, this is what you did, the headline. Now, the how. Instead of forcing users to fill a long sign up form, I devised a lightweight flow based on mobile phone and OTP, which made the process easier, both on mobile and desktop. My contribution, your own personal contribution. I identified the bottleneck in checkout flow using mixed panel funnel reports. I wireframed high fidelity mockups using Figma and Miro. Played the product owner role in Scrum based sprints. The feature was shipped in six weeks. Coordinated focus groups with a power user pool before rollout. So you see, I was able to describe why the feature was undertaken and what the goal was. And then the action steps that I took to contribute to the reduced abandonment rates by 15%. Do you guys understand? Am I moving too fast? Escobar company. All right. Overall, the idea is to show your how, your what, your what is your headline, your how, which is what did you guys do and what was your contribution, right? And your why. Now, you went on to show. The, the product screenshots or the wireframe for contest. You can see that here. And then about the product, you can see that you can see that beneath. 
It's an e-commerce product that specializes in consumer electronics delivery. It's a unique promise of money back, one day shipping guarantee. Add background of the work and a working link to see it live if possible. So do you guys understand? I believe that when I share this slide, it will provide more context. And then when I share other examples, you would also see, or oh, I hope you already have an idea of what a portfolio should look like. If you do this like three, you are able to do three or four products like this. The portfolio has finished now, nothing else again. And then just add your brand, your brand details, what you've done as a human being in product management industry. You show yourself as a product leader. People take you more seriously. All right. Let's move on. So we have that part where you had the visual presentation. You can even go on to provide more context, right? The context, the problem, the opportunities, the action, the results. You can leave it at that first page, right? But if you decide you want to just provide more information, you can go on to still outline it this way. But I think that everything here was already addressed in the previous slide. Now, Try to include at least three or four of the stories. You see that you've, you've told the story. You told the th your story. You literally came. You told them the problem that the, comp the product was facing, what you did to solve the problem, the action steps that you took, right, and the result that it got you. You told the story. So try to include at least four, three or two, four of the stories, right? You have to, uh, um, to adjust the stories based on the role you're applying for. Like I mentioned before, they are, they are focused more focused on the growth aspect of the pro of product manager. You want to focus on how you did you 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 you'd like you group the product. You did like PLG for products. In what they are looking for is a product manager that is skilled in documentation, agile. You want to focus on all of those things, right? What they are looking for is a technical product manager who has sound knowledge of technical. You want to emphasize on all those, how you were able to reduce technical depth and all of the information. So that's what you want to focus on. For example, if you're trying for a group product manager position, you obviously need more pro um, experience under your belt. And in that scenario, you need to talk about strategy, stakeholder management, experience managing other PMs. Now it's on to sharing your product thinking and design chops. Now, Next part, after you've written, done your introduction, you've done storytelling for three or to four of different products. I remember I mentioned if you don't have an experience for hypothetical challenges, have three to four of those hypothetical challenges. The next thing you want to do is talk about your personal brand. Now, have you written a post on Medium, LinkedIn? Have you done a podcast? All right. Um, do you have a community? Where you are showing that you are learning, like somewhere like Enova Lab, you want to you want to list that out that you belong to Enova Lab. I guess social validations, right? That you received like recommendations from your previous officers, from your previous managers. You want to add that as well, and then impact and leadership proof. Like I showed to you my own impact here when I started this. I've mentored over five hundred people product management on ADP list and other communities. So you want to um, highlight all of those things so that they see that you are a boss. Next thing you want to do is talk about your tech stack. Um, tech stack doesn't necessarily mean you can quote. It's helpful to also include the mention of all the tools and gadgets you have awareness of which an indication of your progress on it. This is usually found on your resume as well, but attempt to conceptualize it by sharing what you use each tool for. Um, this helps in assessing how hands-on you've been in recent times. So for example, Canva, Azure, Figma, I've been using it for leadership presentations, Figma for 
wireframing, suggestions and proposals, right? Notions is where I write my specs and roadmaps. Jira, Asana, Trello, 4S Plus in managing projects with Jira and Asana, comfortable in setting up workflows and goals, amplitude and mixed panel, proficient in developing correlation, constructing cohort analysis to understand performance. What the big English is, use it to measure metrics, I use it to analyze performance. So, yeah, you see that I do not say I use Node.js or each other coding, <laughs> coding language. All right, how do you distribute um, your portfolio? You can put it in your link in your social media bios. If you have an email signature, you can add it. You can share it as an attachment with your resume. You don't have to wait for them to ask, right? Um, and then you can also send to hiring managers on LinkedIn. Instead of sending them your resume, send them your portfolio instead. That's more visual, that's more convincing. Right? Anybody can do a resume and say this, 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 this. But Portfolio provides more virtual representation. Now we are going to check this real life examples that you can take inspiration from. I think at this point I might need to share my entire screen. So hold on. Right. Um, are you done? Right. Mm, I'm on the last. Uh, I'm on the last. Um, it's not sharing. It's not idea. I just want to go through examples. Right. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So this is the notion one. Um, see what his portfolio looks like. So you can see even included the PRD, right? Uh, the so let's look at this one. This is the one I like the most, um, this Canva. Um, introduction, the products I've worked on, these ships, this this road specs for redesign. Um, see the details on every one. My tech stack. Where I can add value at your company. You see, he added. I told you that this is very important. Where can I add value at your company? Help improve retention. Democratize this. Right. You can have a general. My, if you if you have a portfolio on your website, right, might not necessarily um, be be able to like tailor the portfolio every time to the particular job, right? So as a product manager, what are the important things that you need to to do to add value to a company? You can just add this, right? This is where I can I can come in as a as a product manager at your company. I can help you in terms of PLG, right? go into details how you're going to help with plg right i can if i'm experienced in ai i can infuse ai in your products to um create better user experience and all of that so this person went on to rec references but what i mentioned is like you can add um recommendations so as simple as that, you can go through the other examples to see what um, the portfolios look like, right? So I'll take questions now. All right, thank you very much for this amazing session. Guys, um, if you have questions, Yes, she will be sharing the slide, Ibrahim. Um, if you have questions, yeah, okay. 
your goodness, please go ahead, has, um, raise your hands up so that we can take your questions. Let's have our hands raised. Okay, we have Abby. Hi, Abby. Please go ahead to ask your question. Unfortunately, you guys, we won't be taking so much questions because of the time, right? I mean, other people have other engagements and we would not want to really eat into everybody's time. So we'll just be taking probably two questions. Right. Um, and every if we just have other questions, we can just have um, ask um, the question on the community, right? And goodness will be there to prefer answers or solutions, right? Um, Ali, please go ahead. All right. Thank you very much for this um, wonderful session. So, just two questions. The first question is um, if you check on the Canva page of that, um, Jonathan Doe. He said, I'm a PM, I'm a PM uh, whatever, I've been like that like for quite a while, blah, blah, blah. But for example, someone who is trying to transition you know, into products management, for instance, how do you expect the person to start his or her own you know, uh, profile uh, pitching? Like, for instance, I'm a customer services. Do I, do I say I've been a customer services associate for blah, 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 so, so years and so on and so forth? That's number one. Number two, how long should a normal portfolio be one page, two pages, three pages, and I mean, just help us with some context there. Thank you. All right, thank you, Abby. Those are great questions, All right? So, what I normally tell people, um, people with zero more experience, but that's my expertise, right? I focus more on people who are transitioning and getting new product managers. Um, and all I normally say is, look for responsibilities in your previous roles, right? That are similar to what product managers do. And I think that if you have customer success or customer support, you have a very, very low hanging fruit, right? You can leverage your customer support role a whole lot to, um, to show experience in your product management, right? It is a very, very transferable skill, right? There are so many transferable skills in product, um, customer success so if you highlight that especially if you're a customer success right if you highlight it i think you'll have great chances because you show that you can you you you've interface with users you can empathize with users and you can translate all users needs into product ideas right so this is this is you want to um, emphasize that right? but if you what i mentioned is look for roles that are similar to things that you did in your previous role um and um emphasize on that so another thing is you want to if you have no experience you want to also um talk about like okay i'm a customer support or i mean let's not use customer support now that's just something totally different um I've been a business development manager for five years, right? Um, these were my achievements. If you check that, that, that place, he didn't just say he was a, a product manager for eight years. He went on to say the things that he did um, as a product manager for eight years and what his focus has been, right? Again, emphasize the things that you've done that are important in product management role. As a business development manager, you also interface with customers, right? And you um, try to sell the product to them. And one thing I mentioned is that the, product, the role of a product manager is similar to that of a salesperson, because you're selling the product to the product. <laughs> you're selling the product to the product, right? You're trying to make sure the product is is um, is satisfying users' needs, right? And it is people actually adopting it, that there is product usage. So you are using your PLG to sell the products. So you really want to look at tactically. I don't think that there's, 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 there's any role, right, that doesn't have one or two similarities shared with a product manager. Check, you are a leader somewhere. You, are, you let people. That is something a product manager does. Emphasize it, right? So there's one thing about titles, titles, titles. If people are looking for titles, point the title to, to, to suit them too, right? When I was, there's something that I, I did with, with as, a, as a newbie product manager. 
um my title was um i think it was i can't remember but i think it was um was i was doing something relating to customer um um products right but i wasn't a product manager right oh i wasn't a, a a product owner or that wasn't the title they gave me the title was around um business development or so my own core focus as a person was onboarding making sure that the users onboarded like properly on the product so i called myself a product onboarding manager right that's the time to like put on the cv yeah if you and if you ask me that is what i did that was them bombarding the users <laughs> so you really want to think tactically and to and um project your cv project yourself that you have experience you really look and think deeply do you really do not have do you really have zero zero experience in product management it's not until you call yourself a product manager that you have that that you are, you are, that you are and like, that you have the skills for product management right you might not be a product manager in the sense of the title but have you done one or two things that a product manager has to capitalize on it emphasize on it and when you are speaking um be smart about it and make sure that it's that right so that's that's that on the first question second question basically it's about your it's much more um the pages length of pages and all of that is basically dependent on your experience right like i mentioned before don't make it too wordy um emphasize a lot on puts a lot of visuals more than you put test and then you can say if you are talking about three three stories let's say you're talking about three different products right you know that at least that will take you at least at, at least three pages then your introduction is there then your text stack then your um your this thing the uh, personal branding parts as the products you've talk, worked on. I'm sorry, the um, links to um, podcasts, articles, and all of those these impacts that you've made. So let's say almost seven to ten pages. Yeah, Abby, I hope I answered your question. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. Thank you so much for that one. Um, yes, we have come to the end of today's session. Thank you very much, um, goodness, for this insightful session. And um, we're so grateful for you know, your time.